Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> sometimes what is going on ladies and gentlemen we're back with another episode of summer of guests and we've had a, such a stacked lineup this summer but we are joined today by lost tv guys how you guys doing today doing good doing man doing good. good doing good um so uh this is the first time you guys are both on the podcast and uh so uh, first of all nice warm welcome to the both of you um and i know that you were on the east versus west recently so you kind of have a little experience of how stuff goes around here. Kind of a little chaotic when we did that. That was fun. It was fun, though, man. It was fun. Definitely got to do it again. Got to do it again. So if you guys can see, obviously, they are uh, they are driving on the road. This is the first podcast where we're actually going to have them on the road driving. So that's cool. Um, just be safe while you're doing it. Of course. I'll focus on the road. Don't worry. I got you. All right. So first, uh, we got a couple uh, things to talk about today in the horror uh, world. Um, so let's get right to it. Uh, first and foremost, uh, The Hunt. It's a movie by Blumhouse that is coming out pretty soon. It is being pulled from theaters and due to the respect of the shootings that just recently happened in both El Paso and where was it? Dayton. Um, and they don't know when it's going to be re-released. And uh, they're thinking that if they do have a future release date, they don't know if they're going to do a theatrical release. They might put it straight to their streaming service. Uh, have you guys seen the trailer of this movie? And if so, are you guys looking forward to it? If I'm not mistaken, is it the the movie with the the family and the girl that's in the family and the, uh, like right into the family? No, that I'm one sure. is uh, Ready or Not. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, with the hunt, this no, one no, I'm not a hunt. So think of it like this: uh, R-rated um, type Hunger Games type movie, right? But um, the girl wakes up in yeah. this town. She goes into this gas station. Uh, she tries to figure out where she's at. And, like, these rich people, like, have her surrounded in this community. And they do this this game called The Hunt where they go and hunt these, like, random people that they kidnap there and, and they kill them. So it looked interesting s s nonetheless. But, um, yeah, I can see why they pulled it from theaters. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's kind of tough for anything gun related to be in theaters right now with all the stuff going on. Um, especially something that seemed that's almost like so realistic that could happen. Yeah. So it's a, it's a touchy thing right now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I can understand the whole thing with uh, yeah, it, what happened in El Paso and Dayton was just kind of a tragedy, and um, yeah, anything gun related. Yeah, it's like, I mean, they're doing it out of the respect of just, you know, of all the families yeah. that were lost and stuff like that, you know, so. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that was... It sucks. Go, go ahead. Oh, I was saying it sucks as far as, like, you know, box office money, but, I mean, uh, you got to respect the decision. You got to respect made, them for yeah. doing that. Yeah, very true. Yeah, that was actually a very smart move on Universal, even though they know they'd be taking a loss on this one. Um it was a smart move on them. They are coming out with a uh, a streaming service, I think, through Comcast and stuff, and they're thinking about putting it on that streaming service. So if that happens, we'll keep you uh, informed on that one. But uh, definitely a smart uh, move on Universal, especially with all the things going on right now um, and stuff like that. This isn't the first time something like this has happened, though. I don't remember what movie it was, but there was a movie. It was like an action movie with like a lot of gun violence and stuff like that. And there had been just recently a shooting. No, there was that, that well, happy, death oh, happy Death Day. Happy Death Day? Happy Death Day, too. It was on the anniversary of um, Stoneman Douglas. Uh, and they wanted to... Uh, the, the family's petition did not have that movie released on that day. Yeah. I don't really see the relevance between those. Well, I mean, in a way and not in a way because of the date it was released. Yeah, yeah, I guess out of respect on the actual death, day. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, I get they that. They had to move the date. I know, I know. Um, a long time ago, it's not really a horror movie, but that that, that movie, that movie, The Watch. I don't know if you remember that. They, yeah. Like, cut it out because something that happened with um, like Trayvon Martin and stuff like that. So I know they like yeah. changed the name because it used to be called The Neighborhood Watch, and they changed the name. I don't know if they pushed it back, but they definitely changed the name, and 
do some things to that. So it's, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. These tragic things happen. You can't really control it. You just got to work around it. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, respect to Universal for uh, doing what they did. Uh, I know it was kind of, like I said, it was a hard decision to make for them on a, on a money and, and business point of view, but they made the right one for the respect out of the families and stuff. Um, moving on to a little bit more brighter news. Uh, Haunted Mansion over here in California, uh, one of the OG rides of um, Disneyland California, actually just turned 50 uh this past week and um yeah that's a huge milestone that's that was one of the rides that like i said was one of the og rides of the park and um that's it's cool to this day it still has its reputation of being a ride um i know they have one out in walt disney world have you guys been to walt disney world and have you guys rode that version of it yeah we yes. actually wrote it yesterday yeah, oh sweet did. sweet sweet yeah so, so that's uh that's fun love that ride it's my favorite ride at Magic Kingdom. Definitely. Um, that's how I feel with uh, the ride here, actually, because um, I, I think there's just so much with not only the, like a lot of the classic standpoint, um, but they've added stuff over the years. Some good, some not so good, but nonetheless, the ride's a classic, and like every time I go there, I have to get on it. Just it's it's one of my go-to rides. You get that nostalgic feeling feeling when you get on. It's like that smell. It's kind of like that horror night smell in a way. I know it's kind of veering off topic, but you you know what it is, right? Away. Definitely, yeah. Like right. a lot of attractions and stuff have this certain smell when you walk in, where you just know where you're at and stuff like that. And I feel like this ride when I go to Disneyland. I, I when I walk in, the smells, the sights, like I know I'm in the haunted mansion. So I feel, yeah, that that has a lot of sentimental value to me, and I uh, I look forward to seeing it in another uh, for the hundredth anniversary, hopefully. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's looking, it's looking good for hopefully the next 50 years. I know as far as, it's like, it's one of like the only, um, untouchables. It's an untouchable. not, not even that. Like it's, as far as Disney goes, it's like the, maybe like the darkest ride there besides like Tower of Terror. Not as far as like lighting or being an actual dark ride, but like in terms of the theme of it and stuff like that, you don't really see much of that in a place that's supposed to be so happy. Yeah, definitely. It was like he wanted to take one of those like original Carnival Dark rides and kind of put a, his own twist on it. So yeah, I, I can see where that's coming from. I, I I love that ride, and it's kind of like the best of the horror I get at Disneyland, being one of the happiest places on earth. That's like the most horror I get at Disneyland. So. You know, is this sixty-five or seventy? Because everyone keeps flying by me. Yeah, it's fifty. Okay, that's Florida. That's Florida there you go. For you, guys. <laughs> you heard her here from Lost TV. It's Florida, man. The speed limits are say one thing, people are doing others. That's much like how it is out here in California. It's everywhere. <laughs> um, next bit of cool news. I'm a huge metal and punk fan, and um, this one is one of my favorites. Rob Zombie, um, who I had the pleasure of seeing on New Year's Eve last in 2018. Um, he opened for Ozzy. And Rob Zombie is having is they're finally giving him his own Funko Pop. So I'm very much looking forward to this. Um definitely I've been trying to collect a lot more of the rock and roll Funko Pops as of late. Uh, I have I know I have the whole Metallica set. I have Johnny Cash and I have um Freddie Mercury as of right now for rock and roll, but uh to get Rob Zombie in there that'd be really cool. Um I like the way he looks. He basically, he's in one of his costumes, and he has, like, a cross on his face and stuff like that, usually how he goes out for uh, a performance. And, um, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this. Are you guys fans of Rob Zombie? I like his movies to an extent. <laughs> okay. I get yeah, that. That's, 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 that's as far as it goes. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I hope, like, I'm happy he's getting a Funko Bob. I'm really happy that Funko is branching out into different different regions of music and different regions of, like, media for people to, like, associate themselves with. Definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a huge, like I said, I'm a huge fan of his music, too. I mean, his music is, like, partially some of the reason how I get by my day most of the day when I'm listening to music. Um, and I love a lot of his, a lot of his music has a lot to do with horror-related stuff. And if you go see him in concert... Like, a lot of the images he puts on the screen is, like, old classic universal horror movies and stuff like that. and um, So you can tell the guy's very passionate about horror. 
and we, even when he he kind of even shows it in his movies too when he when he directs and stuff that he's really passionate about what he does and stuff like that um with the exception of of uh of Halloween 2 we we don't talk about that one but we don't talk about that <laughs> that's uh that's not one we like to talk about uh however everything else for me I've I've enjoyed um so what you have to do is you have to get the um the Rob Zombie Pop when it drops and then save up money and buy the Captain Spaulding Pop put them together that That's sounds awesome. Then. Yeah, I, I, I love Captain Spaulding. That guy just gets me going laughing. Yeah. Um, all right. This one is Better something I'm. This one is something I'm very much looking forward to, uh, oh. and I hope this happens because Quentin Tarantino, as you guys know, has made nine movies. He wants to be known for ten uh, movies, and then he's calling kind of. He's calling quits on directing. He said he'd still like to do some like screenwriting and stuff like that or some producing and stuff, but he's calling quits on directing and writing. So Quentin Tarantino actually came out in an interview and said that uh, someone asked him if he'd do a horror movie because um, a lot of people liked the um, the way he took Once Upon a Time in Hollywood where it had some of the Charles Manson um, scenes and stuff like that. Um, a lot of people liked the way that kind of went, and they would like to see a horror movie directed by uh, Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino has came out and said, I'm not going to write it off. I, I probably, if, if I have a good enough story and if I write a good enough script, I could potentially make one of my, my last my last movie a horror movie. Um, I know he's got a lot of ideas in his head right now as far as what his last movie wants to be. Um, I know one of them, obviously, he's been bouncing around is Kill Bill Volume 3. And that would be, uh, be pretty fun. I would very much enjoy that. Um, and I know how they can do a Kill Bill Volume 3. Um, another one he's been bouncing around and it's actually this one's heavily been like mentioned and he's actually came out and said it that he wants to do an R-rated Star Trek movie um, so that could be a potential last one but he said if he gets a good enough idea and a good enough script for a horror movie that he'll do that for his last movie are you guys fans of Quentin Tarantino and if he were to direct a horror movie would you go see it I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. Awesome, man. I'm a huge, huge fan love and for sure, I mean, I personally really love From Dust Till Dawn, and I want to. It's not. It's not a full-on horror movie, but it really displays how well the man can take the horror genre and give you a phenomenal movie. Definitely, yeah. Um, especially with From Dust Till Dawn, that was such a, a fantastic film put together by him and Robert Rodriguez, and. Um, you know, it, 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 so, it, it had you, you know, kind of in with the whole fact of them being, um, you know, bank robbers on the run to El Rey and, New, and New, uh, in Mexico and stuff like that. And then they, you know, they end up at this at this place called the, the Titty Twister and it's open from dusk till dawn. And um, you end up finding out that, of course, all the um, strippers in there are actually vampires. Um, and that was just a, an amazing twist because like. Throughout this whole movie, you know, you just think it's about them on the run, getting away from stuff. And then when they go into this bar and stuff goes, like, haywire and stuff like that, like, it just turns into a completely different movie, like, from what you were watching. So, I, I like the twist that the movie t uh, took. Quentin Tarantino actually did do, if you really think about it, and he counts this as a horror movie in a way. It was kind of more of a psychopath serial killer movie. But if you ever guys uh, get the chance to check out, or if you have checked out, the movie Death Proof with um, Kurt Russell, he considers that... Uh, a horror movie, believe it or not. Really? <laughs> yeah, um, that was part of the Grindhouse double feature that he did with Robert Rodriguez, where, of course, he had Death Proof and um, Planet Terror, um, and it was filmed, I think, in 70mm print or 30mm, I don't remember, but it had that very nostalgia, Grindhouse uh, film, old-school old style film look to it, which I really dug. And, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, one of my favorite Tarantino movies, hands down, is Death Proof, uh, just because the way it, it plays out and stuff like that. Um, I, I really think it's it's a it's a really good movie. Um, but yeah, if Tarantino does a horror movie for his last movie, I'm all in for it. I loved Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's actually currently one of my favorite movies of all time right now. I love pretty much every movie he directs, and I cannot wait to see what kind of horror movie he would do. I mean, as far as like, I mean, he obviously has the the I guess you call it gory, like gory part of movies down. So 
you don't got to worry about that with it. I guess the only thing would be getting the, the elements of horror that people want in it, or I guess that he wants, because he kind of does think this own way in the movie to make it like a true horror movie. Um, yeah, he's, he's such a talented director that I, I think he can get anything done, really, so I'd, I'd love to see a horror movie from him. Definitely, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait, so... Only time will tell. The guy usually takes a year off and then starts writing something, so I'm looking forward to it. Soon, as we always say. Soon, right? Uh, all right. And the last thing we're going to obviously talk about today on the podcast is uh, kind of a topic I saved for last because I knew this was going to be a more longer one. If we find some games that we find uh, both uh, interested in, we'll probably talk about them a little bit more to an extent. Um, a lot of these games I looked through this earlier, and some of them I really don't know, but they, I guess they're horror games and... Yeah, uh, so uh, let, let's just get started with this list. If you guys know any, go ahead and feel free and call them out if you guys know it. But uh, we're going to start off with uh, Remnant from the Ashes. Uh, it's by Gunfire Games. It's going to be on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. That is coming out August 20th. I've never heard of that uh, game. I don't know yeah. if you guys have heard of that. <laughs> that yeah, don't know what that is. Um, Control uh, Remedy. Uh, it's going to be on PS4, Xbox One, and Remedy. Okay. Uh, Control Remedy. And it's going to be on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, that's coming out August 27th. Uh, again, don't know what that is. Got nothing. No idea. Um, <laughs> the Dark Pictures Man of uh, Medan. It's a super massive by Supermassive Games. It's going to be coming out for the PS4, Xbox One, and the PC. That is August 30th. It's... From the same people who made the game Until Dawn. So if you guys were fans of Until Dawn. It's um, a really good game. Yeah, the same people who made that is making this one. Uh, and I, I've, I've actually been reading some stuff on it. And it looks like uh, it's going to be a multiplayer game. And it's looking like to get, it's getting a lot of good reviews for uh, stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to that one. Um, this one was kind of, uh, when I saw this one at E3, this one looked pretty interesting. I think I'm going to have to check this one out. But they're making a Blair Witch game. What? Yeah, <laughs> so they're making a Blair Witch game. It's it's by uh, the, the Blobber team. And it's coming out on the Xbox One and the PC on August 30th. Um, the same. This is the same team who made the game Layers of Fear um, and Observation. Uh, they revealed this during E3, and I saw the trailer of this. This looks really awesome. So think of it as kind of like Outlast, um, where you can't really do anything, but you're trying to solve the mystery of what's going on in this forest. You have a dog with you, so that's fun. Um, it, it, it's like Outlast meets um, Slender in a way, where as you're walking through the woods, you see the freaking Blair Witch everywhere. So looking forward to that one. Oh, man, that's one of those. It's one of those with filled with jump scares and stuff like that. That should be really fun. Really looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> That'll yeah. be a big YouTube game. Gotta love it. I think, honestly, if uh, if a lot of people want to see it, I'll, I will buy it and I will stream it. So definitely maybe look up, look forward to that when it comes you out. You heard it here. Comment below if you guys want to see this man play Blair Witch. Blair Witch. Oh. Honestly, I'll probably get scared and everything. You want to see someone shit themselves live. Exactly. Exactly. No, no, you gotta, you gotta make Sammy play it. Make, make Sammy, Sammy play it even better. Him. There we go. Even oh better. Oh my god. <laughs> he would not know what to do. He would just start freaking out, struggling, and then he'd eventually just hand me the controller. Like, dude, I don't know what to do. You have to do this. Ugh, this guy. It, it, that's Yeah, that's... Sammy, if you're watching, uh, you're gonna be playing Blair Witch, so that should be fun. There it is. <laughs> Um, so there's this other game that's actually, uh, that's actually been out, but I guess they're, they're doing either an expansion or another game or something like that. Uh, but it's called Monster World or Monster Hunter World. And they're doing like an Iceborne, I guess, expansion that's or, awesome. or something like that. Um, released by Capcom. It's coming out PS4, Xbox one on September 3rd, and they have not released a release date for PC yet. So if you guys are fans of, uh, Monster Hunter World, the Iceborne pack is coming out, and yeah, that's something to look forward to. Um, a game that I'm looking forward to because of the cliffhanger ending that I really, and this is the franchise I've been enjoyed a, having fun with a lot. Um, the next two, actually. Uh, Gears 5 
is coming out on September 10th for the Xbox One and the PC. So we're going to be continuing, of course, the storyline of uh, JD Phoenix, his dad, and all of his other friends. Um, very much looking forward to this. Are you guys Gears of Wars fans? Um, I used to play. Yeah, I used to be an Xbox guy. I'm saying used to like it was a long time ago, like a couple months ago. It's when I stopped being an Xbox guy. But I, I tried getting into it, but it was, I, I think I played like the first two maybe, and then I stopped from there. So it's been a while. Oh, man, then you messed out on one of the best games, which is Gears of War 3, man. That was the best one, in my opinion. Um, I'm going to go get you an There it is. All right, I sold it. I'm not getting it again. We got to go buy a new Xbox and play Gears 3. That's it. Buy Gears 3, return it. Or if, you have a, or if you have a PC, I mean, it's on the Game Pass, and there you go. Oh. So. There it is. Look at the guy with the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's one of the big things they're also trying to really incorporate is the PC Xbox crossover. So if you have a PC with Windows 10, and you can download the Xbox app and get Game Pass, get Xbox Live and Game Pass for only 15 bucks a month. That's beautiful. Xbox uh, didn't pay me that for that. Like a Xbox that's didn't pay me for that. that. Like we're trying to get but I would love if Xbox to sponsor this event right now. I would love if Xbox sponsored me because then that would be like awesome. <laughs> like free Xbox Live and Game Pass, like that'd be awesome. Exactly. Um, Microsoft needs to sponsor this. Yeah, Microsoft, if you're next, watching, next year. hit me up on email. <laughs> uh, the Knights of Horror at gmail dot com. Not if you're watching. No, 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 no. When you see this. When you see this. <laughs> Just Microsoft. When right, you see this. Right in the comments. Next Just, year's summer of guests. <laughs> Next year's summer of guests, so Major Nelson. <laughs> Give me all the Microsoft execs, all the people who've done Gears Five. I'll I'll interview them. Give me the guy who voices Marcus Phoenix. It's done. <laughs> um, I don't see how this is a horror game, but uh, I, I guess maybe it has some horror elements to it. I never saw them in any of the past games, but uh, Borderlands Three by Gearbox Software. I don't know, I guess some people could consider it as scary. I don't know, that's that's all I got. I mean, the most I could think of is the fact that just the, the the creatures, but, I mean, I never found them scary. I just found them fun to kill. Yeah, that's the exit. Um, that's coming out September 13th uh, for Xbox One, PC, and PS4. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to that. I've been very much waiting for uh, Borderlands 3 for a long time. Just a heads up, we have... We have decent signals. It keeps coming in and out, but we hear you. You're good now. Keep You're good now. Sweet. It keeps coming up and back. You, as far as audio, you guys are good, and then with the video, yeah, it's like coming in and out. So, just as long as I can hear you guys audio-wise, we're good. Perfect. All right. Uh, let's continue on. Uh, Devil's Hunt. I've never heard of that either. Uh, PC, PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, September 17th. PC, it's coming out on the PC as well. So, um, yeah, I never heard of The Devil's Hunt. So we'll move on to the next one. I don't think it's going to make me dust off my Switch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I, I've recently just got into uh, watching. Well, I'm, I'm watching. I haven't played it yet, but I'm watching my cousin play uh, every now and then. He'll throw on Zelda, and I'm just intrigued of how beautiful that game looks. So, um, yeah, I can't wait for the second one because I'll probably just watch him play it again, and you know, I, because I'm gonna be honest with you, I suck at those games. Like, I I play for like ten minutes and I just I don't know what I'm doing. So like watching him, my cousin's like a diehard Zelda fan, so just watching him play the game, it, he like to tell he tells me all the history and stuff like that, and I just I just crack jokes. Like he was playing the other day and he just I think he res rescued Princess Zelda and stuff like that and. All of a sudden, I'm like, "Fuck!" You'd think after 30 goddamn years, Zelda would learn how to not get fucking kidnapped or something like that. Like, <laughs> it's, it's 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 hilarious. That sounds, that sounds like Peach. It's the same yeah, story. right. Peach. You think after all these years of all these Mario games, she would learn not to get fucking kidnapped? Yeah, I think she just wants to get kidnapped at this point. Yeah, at this point, she's like, "We need to make another game. We need to make money. Let's just do it." That's what she's <laughs> at this point. She did on it. Um. Boulders, Boulders Gate 1, 2, Siege of Dragon, Spear, Icewind, Dale, Planetscape, Torment. That's that's, that's, one, that's time. one game. I think that's like five games in one. So you got Boulders Gate 1 and 2, so that's two. Uh, Siege of Dragon, Spear, that's three. 
Icewind Dale and Planetscape Torment. I think it's a bundle that's coming out. But it's coming on the Switch, Xbox One, and PS4, September 24th. Uh, if you know any of those games, and there's there's gonna be that one fan in the comments that knows all these games and he's excited for it. <laughs> They're gonna get mad. They're like, that's my favorite series. Dude, how do you not know what freaking Blunders Gate One and Two are? Siege of Dragon Spear, Icewind Dale, Planetscape Torment is. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You're gonna, get, you're gonna get corrected. It's it's actually one game. It's really one long it's game. One Just long one game long game. game. That oh my god, that'd be freaking. I had to kill myself if I had to play that game. <laughs> God, that's just, it's bad. Um, Code Vein by Bandai, Bandai Na Nameco? Bandai Nameco? I don't know if I'm saying that company right. Uh, that's coming out for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC on September 27th. Um, again, another game I don't know about. Another. This is a game I'm looking forward to, though, and it's a remaster. Uh, Ghostbusters, the video game remastered with for PS4, Xbox One, PC, and the <laughs> Nintendo Switch. Yet? No, that, that is already. that is coming out October fourth. Oh, so signal uh, the game didn't drop. The signal did. Oh, no, we're good, we're good. Yeah, that's one I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, um, the Outer Worlds Obsidian for PS4, Xbox One, and PC, October twenty fifth. Switch to be uh, to be determined. So no one likes the Switch, I guess. I love the Switch. <laughs> Um, medieval or yeah, medieval remake uh, by Other Ocean PS4 October 25th. It looks like a kind of goofy kind of kids game. Um, this is one I'm looking forward to because I love this game on the GameCube as a kid, and I hope you guys are just as excited for I am as I am. Luigi's Mansion 3 by Next Level for the Nintendo Switch October 31st. Oh, that's a blessing. That is coming that's out just a on Halloween. That's gonna make you dust off your switch. I don't listen. If I'm not, I'm dusting off my switch. I'm buying any Luigi Mansion before, but as far as I know from the game that they have at Dave and Buster's, I'm awful at it, so I won't touch it. I played the shit out of it when I had my GameCube, and I can tell you this: I love that game, and I'm so glad they're finally making another one, especially for the Switch. I'm gonna literally buy that just so I can play my cousin's Switch. Like I'm gonna tell him, dude. Your Switch is mine for, like, the next month. So, uh, good luck with that. I, uh, yeah. So that I'm going like, to lease it out to you. <laughs> Just lease, he's going to lease it out to me. That's exactly what's going to happen. Um, so, Kojima Productions is releasing Death Stranding. That's the one with, um, uh, what's his name? I don't know, the guy from The Walking Dead. Yeah, Daryl Dixon. Uh, I can't remember his name. What's his name, Tammy? Daryl Dixon. From Norman Reedus. Uh, <laughs> Norman Reedus will be, uh, of course, in the game, and that's coming out for PS4 and PC uh, November 8th. So that's going to be fun. That was uh, Kojima, so there we're all Kojima. All right. We are... I had a lot of hype surrounding it for a while. Yeah, this mo this game's been actually getting hyped for a long time. I remember seeing it like at like three E threes already. So it's like they need yeah. to just drop this game. Yeah, already. I, noticed, I remember seeing something that had like a baby or something. I don't remember exactly what it was about. I know there was a baby involved in it. Something like that. It's it's a confusing thing, and they haven't really said much about it. So we'll see. Um, Doom Eternal. I'm looking forward to this one as well. PC, uh, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch for November 22nd. I love the Doom franchise, so this is going to be a good little fun, gory game to play. I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, Phoenix Point, snapshot game for the Xbox One PC. I don't know. Um, so if you're a Witcher fan, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition is coming on the Nintendo Switch sometime in 2019. There you go, another Nintendo software Switch. I'm not... <laughs> I'm, not turning, I'm not turning that thing on. That's one game like Zelda where you're gonna have to put some serious time in. I promise you that. Yeah, Especially, not, I, can't, I, can't, I can't be that dead. I got the Switch for like Mario games, not for that kind of serious shit. I, I can't do it. So like, yeah, much like Zelda, like if you really like put the time into that game, like Witcher is the same exact thing, and it's the complete edition, so it's gonna come with all the DLCs and stuff. It's got like 150 plus hours of gameplay. I have to dedicate. Someone has to dedicate their life to that at that point. Oh yeah, because not that's 150 hours. That's just the main story. You got like side shit to do and stuff. 
So it it, it's it's a long game. Um, those who remain is going to be coming out for the PS4, Xbox One, PC, and the Switch late 2019. I don't know what that one is. I am almost done with these games. I'm thank you, thank God. There's like been like maybe a total of ten games that I'm looking forward to. Um, Man Eater coming out for the PC in 2019. It looks like a kind of Olympics. I don't know, kind of game. Wait, was it um, and then the last one, thank God, Black Mesa uh, Zen for the PC in 2019. I am sorry I wasted a lot of your guys' time with those 25 <laughs> games because now that I'm thinking about it, a lot of those I'm not looking forward to. Um, <laughs> there's like a handful I'm looking forward to. Um, but yeah, that is going to do it for the 25 games, horror games being released in... 2019 um which we only have a couple more months left uh all right the last thing we'll talk about uh before we let you guys go um let's talk about a little bit about the horror season so what are you guys looking forward to so far that's been announced at hhn orlando all right oh, shit. i'll let nico talk about what he's excited for because you know all right well, I, well, uh, we had we had some talks with some people yesterday and i guess they, they don't agree with a lot of things i say but I have, I've heard a lot of things. I know it's different over there with you guys with originals and stuff. Um, but uh, a lot of people seem to think that uh, Depths of Fear is going to be the best thing ever. Just fucking greatest thing ever, house ever. I, and, you know, I'm not I'm not buying it. I'm not here for it. Um, I'm sticking with my with my Nightingales that I really hope and feel like it's going to be the best. So I'm, I'm here for all the slander that may come. I don't give, I don't give a damn. I'm, I'm sticking true here. There you go, sticking with yours. What about you, man? What do you What do you thinking, man? What, tell me, tell me what, tell me what you think, man. The, the, the talking we were having was I was defending Depths of Fear. He was defending Nightingales. And we had another friend. And we had another friend. Depths of Fear. So it was like it was a real unfair obsessed, thing there. He's obsessed with Depths of Fear right now. I was by myself in that argument. Don't get me wrong. I'm hoping that every house is just a gem and everything's perfect. But I feel like Depths of Fear is going to have the right blend with everything that you need in a haunted house. Definitely. Um, Why am I doing so I can't really comment on the Orlando stuff, only that Depths of Fear, if, if it's anything reminiscent to what I think we had something similar at Not Scary Farm, actually, a maze called The Depths, where it was like an underground, underwater type ride. Um, if it's anything like that... Or, you know, Maze. If it's anything like that, then uh, you guys may be in for a surprise. But I know Knott's and, of course, Universal are two different theme parks. So, um, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, All right, so, uh, I don't know. Something you can talk if about. If we want to go, I, I'm, real, I'm really excited. Or, I guess, I'm excited for us, but I'm scared because I, a lot of people don't seem too happy about it. Or I think it's going to be good. And I want it to be good so bad because I love that movie. Yeah. Um, so, we'll see how that goes. I, I don't know how it's going to be, though. It's going to be a difficult one. Um, I can tell you, hands down, the one I'm looking forward to the most is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah. I, I love that movie. It's the, first, it's the first time you guys are getting it over there, right? Yeah, right. so last year you guys got it as a scare zone, and I was completely fucking jealous that I didn't get to go check that out. Um, we freaking lived in that scare zone the whole event, basically. I don't blame you. I would have been there. The I would have <laughs> I would have dedicated a night where I just stayed in that scare zone. Legit, if you go back and watch our footage from last year, ninety percent of the footage is from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, I, I don't blame you, man, because I I have a deep love for that movie. As you guys know, we just interviewed uh, John Mazzari from the composer That's of the true. movie, and um, yeah, I mean, I have such a, an amazing love for that movie. Like it goes back to like when I was a kid five years old going to my uncle's house like hey let's watch killer clowns me wanting to steal the dvd and take it home from them and i i did that and uh now me as a grown-ass man having a freaking fat so mask up there i mean if you guys could see it but it's all the way up there just chilling um and of course i have you know the movie um, it's a bunch of stuff. So I, I, I know I, I just really have, I, I really love this movie and I, I'm excited to see what Horror Nights makes it into uh, a maze of how they're going to shrink an hour and a half movie into like a five minute maze. Yeah, well, you know, what you didn't miss out on is uh, it being the smallest scare zone last year, but yeah, the most true. populated somehow. Yeah. That, that was, that I've, was uh, 
I've just t I've talked to Eddie about that time and time again. I was like, how is this the most popular scare zone? And I got the smallest section of the whole park. Oh, I was, it was the first year they used that section too, because the years before we had that lection that lection section <laughs> in front of a um, disaster or earthquake, whatever it is, whatever yeah. you call it. That whole land is where we had scare zones before, but then they moved that area to right in front of Transformers before Sting Alley, and I'm like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> They, they have to do the projections for like the yeah. tent on the, yeah, on the, projections on the was wall. Cool, so I, mean, I guess that's it was probably the best spot for it as yeah. far as projections go. But it was, I mean, I just there's just flashes going off with cameras, security guards everywhere. I mean, that area was, it was, it was like insane the amount of people in there. Definitely, yeah. It, it it looked like it was a blast. Uh, they were letting people take pictures with the clowns, which I thought was cool. Um, they had, you know, like I said, a very interactive cast, uh, you know, doing that scare zone, which I thought was uh, when everybody's interactive and in their in their zone of, of character, it just it makes everything better. Um, of course, we, you know, you got the clowns acting and stuff like that. They had all the right clowns from different various scenes, of course, from we had Shorty with the boxing gloves. Yeah, and of course, the one with the, the balloon. And I even heard every time the balloon would pop, they'd have like a legit like kind of funeral for it and stuff like that, which I thought was... It was so sad. Yeah. yeah like, on. That, dog was, that dog was a blessing, okay? That dog would bark at me all the time. You know, I love that dog. And when, yeah. When it, when it was sad. <laughs> um, they, they had the ice cream truck. They had the cotton candy cocoons. Um, I, I, I must have watched at least 10 different videos of the, just that scary dog. Smelt like um, was it popcorn or was it cotton candy? I can't remember. It had like a really sweet smell. I want to say it was cotton candy because I feel like the, it wasn't popcorn. The fog had like it was like a sweet smell. It was so good. Every time I went through it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need this. Definitely. I don't know what it is. It's, it's, of course, when you have smells like that, too, it just makes it – it brings the whole scare zone to life as well. And I uh, like I said, I'm very much looking forward to you. Well, gentlemen, uh, we're going to have to get you guys back on an episode of East versus West when they announce the full slate of everything. That way we can have a little debate as to uh, what event's going to take the show uh, and stuff like that. Uh, you know, you got Eddie on the East Coast, uh, defending East Coast. You got me over here on the West Coast. Uh, of course, we had Sammy on, and we had, of course, Lost TV on last time. If you guys didn't see that episode, definitely go check them out. Uh, definitely go check their channel out as well. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description below uh, for Lost TV. Uh, go check out their content. They put up literally pretty much all themes, theme park, and pretty much whatever they feel like it. I mean, that's what that's the beauty of their channel right there. So, um, <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you for being part of Summer of Guests. You guys were actually the second to last episode for the Summer of Guests. We've had an amazing oh. summer, and we're so glad to have you guys on. Uh, and we're actually so glad now to call you guys friends. Exactly. We're not friends. We're family. We're <laughs> freaking family. I love that. Yeah, the little guys got to look out for each other, man. I love that. Um so yeah, thank you gentlemen for being on the on the podcast, and I'm, I'm glad you guys are still in one piece. You guys uh, are still driving and stuff like that, which is awesome. This is you guys actually just made history on the podcast. You're the first actually on the go recording podcast uh, we've ever had on the channel. So there you go. You guys made history. Oh. You could actually never. What you happened? Never be like sedentary. On yeah, we gotta be in a car. We always have to be in a car. Whenever we're in a podcast, we, we, we need walking, to be in the car. On a bike, maybe. Even something. if you guys can't aren't can't moving, like you just have to do the podcast in the car now. That's just a thing. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's that's our that, thing now. That's the gimmick. You gotta be lost in the car. TV on the go. There it is. Lost TV on the go. <laughs> well, gentlemen, uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, coming on the podcast. Like I said, and of course, we will see you guys on the next one. Um, like I said, make sure to subscribe to Lost TV. Their channels on the links in the description below. Um, be sure to join the Madhouse uh, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Twitter at Knights of Horror and then Instagram at The Knights of Horror. Uh, Lost TV, you guys want to plug in your guys' social media to where they can find you and keep up with all your guys' news and stuff? If you look up Lost TV on Twitter, we'll be there. If you look up Lost TV on Instagram, we'll be there. Hopefully. They'll be there. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't think out there. Give yeah. them a follow for sure so you can keep up with their channel. They have great content and stuff like that. That is going to do it for this episode of Summer of Guests. I hope you guys enjoy this episode, and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.